The main idea for this presentation is to uh, warm us up before Wojtek and, uh, and uh, like just wait like uh, 14 minutes because some people I can imagine will be late mm -hmm. and then everyone will be uh, here and ready for, for the next presentation which that, that, that one will be a great one. Okay, uh, I'm Alex. Uh, uh, I actually work for Polydea or Polydea. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. Is it Polydea or Polydea? Yeah. Okay, yeah, super confusing. So I work here and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here back again. Well, different office, uh, different people, but there is, uh, I remember so, some folks over there. So uh, not only me, is almost 40 and working in IT. Those guys most probably as well. Anyways, getting back to my presentation, it's going to be about flow. I'll show you some slides, uh, mostly from documentation. Uh, I, will, I will pretend to be smart and all of that. No, all of that, but like again, it's from, from documentation, so you know that hard. And then I will do some live coding, and we'll wrap up with uh, some uh, links, uh, useful links for you guys to you know, go to read more about flow. Uh, so what is flow? And again, it's from documentation. Flow is a called asynchronous data stream that you can read it for yourselves. But what's interesting in this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, definition is that a flow is basically something that sounds very much like Arc Java. So uh, flow should be called Arc Scroutines, in my opinion, and then everything would be explained, no presentation would be needed. But they decided to call, call it flow, and now uh, actually that's, that's a good thing for me so I can explain what it is. But long story short, it's just Arc Scroutines, so Arc Java for coroutines. <laughs> so uh, let's unpack this definition. So flow is a called uh, data stream. So what cold means, I will, I will show you what hot means and cold is opposite of hot. So hot stream is uh, when items are being uh, emitted and there is no, like, it, there is no pre uh, consumer waiting for this data. So hot stream can emit some data, do some work, even though no one is there to, to like waiting for this work. This, uh, so flow is not hot, but let's continue talking about hot streams. So this is an example uh, I could uh, uh, create that is a hot stream. Uh, so there's this producer with capacity of 10. And again, this is a <laughs> really bad example because flow is not like that, but then I, I find it somehow funny to talk about hot streams, which are, again, cold is not. So a uh, producer will, uh, as you can see, have a capacity of 10 items. And this producer is about to create like 100 items. There is this for each inside of it. And it's basically sending number after number and also printing uh, a message sent uh, with that number that was just produced. So uh, when you run code like this, like in our unit tests, we're gonna see something like this on our screen. So there is not, nothing there uh, reading from that, like receiving from that producer, but still we see those 10 cent lines being printed out because producer here is a hot stream. And again, flow is called stream. So we can imagine that we're gonna read a data, uh, a receive data from that uh, producer. And uh, if we just run code like this, uh, send 10 will be printed out because now capacity after receiving data is there's a capacity for one more value to be produced and then we can print out a receive zero. So this is hot because at this point it emitted some data, did some work, this producer did some work for us even though there was no one to, oops sorry, in this case, there's no one to uh, receive this data and then of course we can receive data and some more work will be done. So this is a hot and again flow is cold. So awesome example. Uh, so what else we can tell about flow? Flow is asynchronous data stream. So a good example of that is that uh, it's basically using coroutines and we know that coroutines can be asynchronous. Just like if there is uh, some work to be done by a suspending function, a, coroutine, a suspending function can be suspended and when there are results back, uh, it, be, it will resume from that point, but it's not blocking us. So that's why it's asynchronous and flow is asynchronous, not because flow is asynchronous, but flow is using coroutines and that, th that way it's asynchronous and can complete normally or even an error. So how to explain that? So there is uh, this in uh, documentation. So we have a flow on the left. We are collecting data from that flow. I will talk about this later, but we can see that we can get a value out of a flow. So that's how, how, how this definition works for a successful case. A flow can uh, uh, end up with a, a, a result in case of success. So we can get this value. Or in case of an error, we have to catch this exception or our app will crash. So like if everything on each and every platform, it can be a, if we run our function or coroutine, whatever it is, we, we're gonna get a result or in case of an error, there's gonna be a, some sort of exception. So flow is no different here. We have to uh, not only co collect data from a flow because it's called, if we don't collect, nothing will be done, but also we need to think about exceptions. And this is also true for XJava, by the way. And then we, the, the way to think about flow, I, I think for me, 
to understand flow is, was to compare flow with uh, um, a sequences from Kotlin. And basically, that's the same thing. So both things are called. Uh, the difference here is that flow is asynchronous thanks to coroutines, and, and, and sequences are not asynchronous. They will just be run on the current thread. Uh, both are stream of data, essentially stream of data. And, and uh, that's it. So if, if, if at this point flow is hard to understand what it is, maybe this will help you. And if that, this doesn't help you, there's a slide at the end that basically compares flow to Rx Java because flow is Rx coroutines, right? So one more thing is this, uh, to think about flow, what is flow, is, is, is uh, 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 just how flow is constructed. So there are actually two interfaces, in, and I think that's all in flow. So one interface is called flow that has this collect uh, suspending function. And the second interface is flow collect collector, which I am not sure why it doesn't have collect method, which confused me a lot. But flow collector emits data, and on the flow at the end collects data. So uh, I'm always confused by seeing this, why the hell collect method is in, in flow interface and not in flow collector interface. But then when you see this in the code, it, 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 it makes sense. But then uh, at first glance, when I, uh, every time when I look at this, actually, not at the first glance, <laughs> I'm super confused. Anyways, flow will, at the end, we're going to collect flow. That's the first interface. And inside of a flow, we'll, we'll have uh, one or more collectors emitting data down the stream. So that's, that's the whole flow. And uh, what's interesting about flow is actually flow structure and how we build flows. And uh, I think it, it's also nice to, at this point to compare to, to this to RxJava. So uh, with RxJava, we, we need to start a stream. We can use a single from callable to start a string or observable from iterable and or completable from action or any other like a uh, way to start a stream. With a flow, we have so-called flow builders. So uh, the, the, the flow at, at the end, the first uh, thing here, that's a flow builder. There are a couple of others. Flow, I think, is the one of the most popular ones, but there is a channel flow. Uh, we can convert a collection to a flow using as flow. So there are a couple of others. Uh, I think we can also co co convert a suspending function to a flow. So anyway, flow starts with a flow builder. Then we have a bunch of so-called, I think I have this on the next slide. Oh yeah, so this is a flow builder. Then the, all those things in the, in the between, so on start, on flow, bless you, map flow on, on, complete, on completion, that, these are called intermediate operators. And flow, so the last in, intermediate operator is catch, the, the purple one at the end, like one before the end. And the last operator is so-called terminal operator. Okay, so flow starts with a flow builder, just like a coroutine builder. And then we have a bunch of operators in there, intermediate operators, and in the end we have a terminal operator. Why there is this distinction between intermediate operators and terminal operators? So the difference is actually here. Flow, so uh, flow builder, and, uh, and on start, and all those uh, so-called intermediate operators, uh, these are regular functions. So we can uh, uh, use them uh, in our uh, non-coroutine part of, of, of code, but on, uh, on the well, uh, so that yeah, so that's regular functions. The stuff we can put inside inside we, we have uh, uh, we can use uh, suspending functions. So actually, in this case, I don't. Well, GitHub is a sus suspending function. The rest is not. But uh, yeah, so the flow and, and those inter so a flow, a flow builder and uh, in uh, intermediate operators. These are regular functions. Inside of those, we can use suspending functions. And the last terminal operator. So collect on this slide. This is suspending function. So what it means is that we can prepare a flow return a flow from our function or library. And only when we are collecting from a flow, only then we need to make sure that this code uh, is run inside of a, a coroutine scope. And well, actually, we don't have to make sure because it won't compile. So, But yeah, we need to run it in, in coroutine scope. We'll see this in a, in a live coding part. So uh, once again, flow starts with a flow builder, which is a regular function. There is, there is one, like zero or more. Uh, um, intermediate operators, and in, in those we can use suspending functions inside, and at the end we collect all the result of a flow uh, using suspending function called collect, and that's terminal operator. Uh, there are three properties, and I, uh, I, I love those slides because the, the, like this, this, this second line, I have no idea what it means, but I know how to show it, but uh, the three properties of a flow. First is context preservation, and there is the second line. I'm not really sure if I can read this properly, so that's flow. Yeah, I, I, I won't try it, but then, yeah, that's one of the properties. And what it means that flow uh, has this context preservation property, so basically it means this. So here what we have, we have a flow which starts with three values, and we do some crazy things like mapping values inside of that. We do some filtering, and at the end, we just collect flow using a single, which is uh, one of the terminal operators. And then we print this out on the screen. 
And as you, you can see, because we are calling, like using terminal oper uh, operator, which is single once again, so we need to uh, run this inside of a uh, coroutine scope. So uh, what, what about, uh, what about uh, context preservation? So with Eric's Java, I'm always uh, confused how those subscribe on and observe on uh, operator works. Uh, one goes up the stream, one goes, I think, down the stream. And when you mix them uh, together, it's even more confusing. Like you put more of those inside of your stream. The flow is a bit easier because the way it works, like, by the way, flow on, this is like subscribe on from ArcJava or observe on. So flow on uh, always goes to the top. So in this case, we have this flow on uh, after, right after map, uh, uh, first map, or the only map in the here. So flow on uh, works on all the operators which are above it. So flow on will run uh, the code above it on the dispatcher IO, and it's easy to understand. Anything that is above it will be run on, on particle dispatcher. There is a second flow in here, and this one will only apply to filter, because right, like right after after filter, there is like up the stream, there is another flow, so that one will change uh, a thread that this uh, is being executed on, and the rest of the so single and let will be uh, run on the uh, coroutine uh, 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 scope dispatcher. So uh, by looking at a flow, it's a bit easier to, to understand uh, uh, how it will be executed, on what threads it will be executed. With Arix Java, I think it's also easy, but it always confused me. Here is a bit easier to understand. So that's context preservation, first property of a flow. Second is exception transparency. And uh, the way it works is as follows. Here we have a, a flow, again, starts with three values. Then we do some, something brilliant. So we are dividing a value by zero. That's an exception, obviously. Then we catch this and emit minus one, and then we collect, and instead of a collect, we do another silly thing. So again, we, we divide by zero. So we have three, two exceptions in here, right? So, uh, but we have one catch inside. So what, what it means, that catch, will catch all the exceptions happening above it in the stream. And you may ask what's gonna happen with the second exception happening inside of a catch. At this point, in, in this version of this code, that's gonna crash our app, so that's why we can use try to catch the, 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 the remaining part, the remaining exception that might happen. So catch operator will work up the stream, and if there is no uh, a catch in the stream, then we need to think about try a catch block. And actually, I don't like this version of the code. Hopefully, I will, I will be able to show you a nicer way of creating, like catching exceptions with flow. Anyways, that's uh, exception transparency, second property. And the last one, yeah, see catch works for the rest. And the last one is my favorite one, so back pressure awareness. I gave a presentation about this when Alex Java was a thing that there's this back pressure awareness. It was super hard for me to understand. I'm not really sure if I, I got it right, but with, uh, there is not, no, no point in doing that with flow because flow is back pressure aware thanks to uh, coroutines. So if, uh, if, uh, if something goes south, coroutines always can be suspended and, and that's what's gonna happen. So there is nothing uh, to be done here and by definition or like thanks to coroutines, flow is back pressure aware. So there is no no worries that collector is too slow to consume data because data won't be produced because suspending functions will be suspended. So that's three properties. Uh, let me really go, quickly go back. That's back pressure awareness, that's exception transparency, and context preservation. And with that, I think the last slide that is required and how flow compares against Eric's Java. So I, I don't use coroutines because coroutines are great, but I love streams and I spend so much time learning Eric's Java. So for me, coroutines, actually, it was just like, oh, I'm, I'm senior Eric Java developer. Out of sudden, I'm junior coroutines developer. I don't like that, right? <laughs> so I, I stick with Eric Java. And now, actually, there is a good reason to switch to coroutines, thanks to Flow, because we can basically recreate our streams, uh, but using Flow and get all the cool features from, uh, from coroutines and all the hard work that Google is doing by pushing uh, coroutines into view models. And they never did that for us with Eric Java. How come? Anyways, how, how they both compare. So with Flow, we have coroutine context, and there are dispatchers there. And with Arixja, we have schedulers. So we can more or less as, uh, achieve the same things. So we can put stuff into, uh, to, uh, like to be run onto, onto backend thread, don't block our UI. So that's, Flow got, gets this for free thanks to coroutines, but uh, like we also can uh, uh, use that when switching over from our Arixja Java streams. Then there's lots of operators here and here, and then, uh, Hard to say, uh, like, I guess there are like 200 operators for RxJava and maybe 100 for, uh, for, for Flow, but truth to be told, all the operators I needed so far were there already in, in a Flow. 
The only difference is that I, I, I think there are some patterns I learned with Rx Java, and I'm not really sure how to do them with, with a flow. But if it comes to like uh, operators, we shouldn't be like worried that uh, some operators are, are, are missing. And hopefully, I'll be able to impress you how easy it is to create a, a flow operator. I, I never like I never tried to do that uh, uh, with Rx Java, but with flow, it's 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 fairly simple. Uh, I shouldn't say that because it's very simple because I did it like four times already. Uh, but at first it wasn't very simple, but hopefully you will see it's, it's not that hard. So that's, I think, second thing that is almost the same. Or it's the same. Uh, if it comes to operators, the only issue is that there are sometimes different names, like catch and retry and uh, RxJava, we have on, on error resume next. Truth to be told, I prefer those like flow names for that. And uh, maybe one more thing is that flow is still uh, experimental, so they are already changing the like, name of those like operators. So there was flat map, and I think it was like, renamed most recently. Uh, but yeah, the op names and operators are, like, would say in pair. And the last thing uh, is like, like the 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 way we work with flow with Rx is very much the same. We need to prepare a st Rx stream and we need to prepare a, a flow stream. Then we need to just think and don't forget to subscribe because like most of our Rx streams are called same same true for for flow. So don't be su su surprised that you don't see any value because you need to collect, you need to subscribe to our stream. And the last thing is that. Do you need to clean up after Rx Java stream? You need, right? We need to catch this uh, uh, disp uh, disposable so that we can uh, dispose of our stream later. And, 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 and it seems that there is no need to do that with a flow. And the reason for that, again, is, 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 is because flow is using coroutines. So we need to run flow inside of a coroutine scope. And our coroutine scopes most probably are being uh, bound to a, a life cycle of our view models. Or basically, we just cancel uh, our scopes in, like, by, by calling cancel on them. So we don't do that. Like maybe there is no like uh, collector. This method from a, a, a collect method from a flow it doesn't return uh, any value. But does it mean that we don't have to uh, clean this up because we are cleaning this up in a different place? So all in all, it's very similar. Prepare, subscribe, or collect, and then just clean up afterwards. Okay, uh, so then the last thing is just this slide in here. Uh, useful links. Uh, I think that this one is uh, super useful. So, sorry, the first one is super useful. So this, I, I really hi highly recommend it. There is a link if you want to take a photo or just remember this name. So that's a presentation from Android Dev Summit. And you can, you can uh, in like, uh, there's, it's about flow, about coroutines, about uh, switching between like in live data, creating a stream of live data or creating a, a flow and then converting that to live data. Really cool examples in, in this presentation. It's only 20 minutes, I believe. So pretty cool. Uh, the second link is, uh, this is a, 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 a library using flow to wrap shared preferences. And I think it's kind of cool as well. It's fairly simple and also uh, shows how to convert Android API to flow. So don't use shared preferences. But yeah, that's a different thing, but yeah. Uh, don't use shared preferences. <laughs> Uh, th this is an uh, uh, Android architectural component, so, so there's a guy, I think he, he doesn't work for Google, but he's there, in the first presentation they are talking about a Twitter sample app and how to use Flow there. And this guy is actually implementing Twitter sample app uh, uh, using Flow. But I'm not really sure if this is official effort by Google, so it's hard to say if this will be accepted to this, uh, to this repo. But the, 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 uh, there is this commit, you can see uh, this guy working on this. And, uh, and this link is kind of cool. So this is uh, Rx Java 2 maintainer, and he created uh, flow extensions. So there was this clash that what, what's going to happen Rx Java flow. We all know that uh, big boys from Google and JetBrains they are into a uh, flow, and it seems like Rx Java maintainer said, "Okay, flow is cool, and I will create extensions for that as well." So that's that's nice to see awesome awesome extensions in his library. And the last li link is to Twitter account of our next speaker, so Wojtek. Highly recommend following. Uh, so, do you follow people on Twitter? Yeah, following him on Twitter. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you very much.